Hello everybody, welcome back to the Health Wealth Podcast. We've got another great episode this week for you. We've got another brilliant health story we're going to be sharing. So this week, I'm joined by Connor Houston, uh, who's going to be running us through um, a pretty amazing health story that he's had and the, and the things he's done to address that. So Connor, first off, thank you for coming and welcome to the show. I don't know, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, I've been watching your podcast and seeing what you've been doing for a while. Uh, I think it's great um, and I'm just happy to have a wee chat with you here, mate. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for the support. And um, yeah, I've, I've actually, we connected on X and I followed your story on there for a while, which, which has been a, a great story and I've been watching that. So um, I, I thought it'd be brilliant to share on, on the show. So yeah. um, let, let's, let's start at the beginning and um, take us back to where your, your health story started. I know you got diagnosed quite young and yeah. with your condition. So just, just kind of run us through that. Yeah, of course, mate. Um, so I started having some issues uh, when I was in primary six. So 11 year old in, in Scotland, we call primary six. Um, started with um, some ve- severe stomach pain, really low stools uh, and losing blood, which was alarming. Um, and it, it caused a lot of worry for my family. Um, I actually went through about a year of testing. Um, in Scotland, like you'll find in England, the NHS is, is pretty slow for things to get investigated. And I was first initially diagnosed with IBS. Um, that was quickly um, further investigated and I was at York, York Hill Children's Hospital uh, when I was finally diagnosed at 12 with Crohn's disease. From that point, um, I'd basically been been put on a journey where I'd be relying, I'd be relying on immunosuppressants, um, infusions uh, and, and drugs that were, were quite hard on the body um, with some, some quite severe side effects. Uh, and it's really from that age whilst I was struggling with, with health problems that I kind of became a wee bit more health conscious, really through uh, no choice. I couldn't eat certain foods. I knew how certain things would, would affect me. Um, but it's been it's quite a journey. Uh, being diagnosed that young was something that it makes social things quite difficult. If you're out with friends and you're in a bit of a flare up and you're going to the toilet 15, 16 times a day, you know, um, it makes things like that at that age, a tender age where social um, insecurities are already rampant. It, it makes it more difficult. So, yeah, I had a bit of a torrid time through my teenage years. Um, I would say that I, I, lo- I missed a lot of school early on um, when I was first diagnosed. But, you know, compared to how I'm feeling just now, which obviously we're all, we're all going about um, for, in further detail, it's it's night and day. I feel like I've I've got my life back. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, definitely. We'll get to the, the things you did that actually worked to change that. I imagine as well, I mean, obviously you said at 12 years old, you know, that's 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 a lot to take being diagnosed yeah. with that and you said socially and i imagine you know at that age to be having to take all that medication i imagine is is not easy as well that's how many different meds were you on at that point yeah so um the, the problem with medication i'm sure anybody who's took a few medications will know you go on a couple of meds like for example immunosuppressants for crohn's um but because it can be quite harsh on the stomach you then need to take things like omeprazole because it can affect the stomach lining. And at one point, I was on about six, seven meds in the morning um, with with some anti-inflammatories throughout the day. Um, and, and a lot of the time, I was finding as the months went on, I'd have more medications to take because I was having side effects. It's having a lot of skin issues um, that can be related to the Crohn's and side effects of the drugs. Um, and, I, and, and that was another thing that was difficult. At school, if you're getting out of class, quite a lot of people become aware of it. Um, and they see it, but also if you're starting to get a lot of things um, on your skin, that it's it's problematic, you know. And it's something I'm actually, I can be quite um, self conscious about even now. So, for example, I, I'm aware that I've got this here, which is actually one of the dogs we're playing. They get a wee bit rowdy, and they manage to scratch me. <laughs> but from from a young age, because I would have a lot of kind of uh, sores in my face, ulcers and stuff, um, it, it caused some issues. I think. I was fortunate that at 12, at that age, you're maybe not fully aware that, you know, how, how can I poorly certain medications will make you feel whilst they're trying to help you. I had no idea that when I was taking steroids, for example, that my face would, would grow in size with swelling and um, I'd be filled with water. But you're desperate, like anybody in that situation, when you feel so poorly, you know, uh, you want to make sure that you can do anything um, to make yourself feel better. So, yeah, it... It had a bit of a social effect, and I think that's the thing that most people who struggle with IBD or even IBS, as I'd imagine, that maybe gets forgotten. You know, there's there's nothing people fear more than the potential of having an accident. And as you get older, um, it becomes even less socially acceptable. 
Um, so yeah, that that was something that I think anybody who's got Crohn's, IBD, or even severe IBS can relate to that fear. Um, and that's something that kind of started young and I carried on. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a lot for such a young age when you're so sensitive, as you say, then you have yeah. the, the things in your skin and you're just heading into the teenage years and when yeah. people start to become more body conscious and stuff. So that that's definitely a lot, a lot to deal with at that age. And um, how, how did things kind of progress in terms of, you know, on, on the medical side, were, were the drugs helping you? Was the medication helping? Did it, did it seem like the, the doctors were kind of making progress? Did it seem like they knew what they were doing or were you just steadily getting worse or staying the same? So initially, um, I certainly got some initial relief uh, when I was first put on um, steroids. Uh, and it was the first thing that I remember specifically um, that I started to not have as many bloody stools and stuff because that was a worry. Um, mm-hmm. You know, at that time, I knew it shouldn't be happening. Um, and everybody was aware of it at the time. And it was something that, that we discussed. So the steroids certainly um, was the first time I started to feel normal in that regard. But the problem is the longer, and you can't go on a lot of these medications long, long term because they can they can make you feel so poorly. Um, you know that that was difficult, and you really started to feel like when a flare a flare up was coming up, and you you would know that in the coming days when it was about to happen, um, you'd be worried first because you know you've got to feel poorly, but also if you were maybe in a, a period where you weren't taking as much medication, you know then that it's going to be increased, which. It's going to come with the side effects. It's going to make you feel poorly as well, and you can't do a lot of the things that you would normally do. So, so it was difficult. But really, from the ages of kind of twelve to fourteen, I was in a bit of a cycle where we we're trying to find out what was the best kind of medication. Um, I had a lot more investigative tests. Tests. I had um, a few colonoscopies. It was actually through colonoscopies and an MRI that was diagnosed because I was quite young and I was going to York Hill. They wanted uh, to keep an eye on it. I'd lost quite a bit of weight um, because I wasn't able to kind of keep any food down really it was yeah. becoming difficult um so i went through kind of two years of missing a lot of school and getting a lot of investigative tests i was actually kept at york hill longer than i should have been because usually when, at a certain age because it's a children's hospital they move you to adult but because i was with the gastro team um and it was quite quite a big investigation i stayed a wee bit longer than i should have i was <laughs> the oldest one there um for a wee bit but I'm thankful. I, I do think that the gastro doctors, especially at York Hill, they did the best at what they had there. Um, but from my experience, even as a 28 year old who still gets phone calls from IBD nurses and still is within with that team, I have never had an in-depth discussion about nutrition unless I've been the one who's brought it up. Um, I, and it's just something that has is, is never happened. At a young age, when I was having these stomach issues, the only thing they did initially it was to test me for celiac disease which I don't have um, because it's just I think that's just a common thing they'll do that was as far as the the dietary questions came for me and that was we're talking about a long time for an investigation for a recurring medication stopping me on certain medications because they weren't working and um, to change me to things that were stronger infusions uh, nutrition wasn't something that was discussed uh, at all and and that was something that and in, in the UK, I'm sure as as you you can agree with, most people aren't nutrition literate. People just go to the shops, they buy what they want, mate. Uh, you know, um, and that's what my family was like. We didn't have the best diet growing up; just a standard, you know, British diet. It would eat some meat, but it was with some bread, it was with some chips. It was was what it was, and that never changed um, through my investigations for Crohn's because. You really, you're, you're, it's emphasised to you that this is an autoimmune condition. There's very little you can do other than take our medication. Um, and that's what it felt like. So any kind of self-help at that stage was, was really out the window. It wasn't really uh, suggested or promoted for us, uh, which I felt was a shame because I think if if I was to have the knowledge that I have now, uh, at that age of 13, you would you would really try to make some dietary and lifestyle changes first. Um, before you start a a journey, which is a cocktail of drugs for quite a bit, that has a, an effect in the body, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's long term effect. That was actually going to be my next question. Was about was nutrition, was diet ever discussed? Because it's you know it, it's crazy to me. I mean, I, I hear of people quite regularly, and I've had clients that have told me that their doctors told them that their Crohn's has absolutely nothing to do with diet. 
and it's yeah. just from a from a common sense perspective i just find it crazy but obviously you know you've experienced the same now did, did you ever bring it up to them and get shut down with it or was it just it was never mentioned well so yeah a couple of times actually um and it shows us there's not much of a bias in regarding the diet because when i first went vegan um <laughs> i brought it up mm-hmm. that listen, i'm trying this to to um to see what i can do and my gastroenterologist right there and then says i don't think it's going to have much of an effect and yeah. The same gastro doctor, he's seen that that didn't have an effect. He was like, mate, you're getting worse <laughs> um, after a while. But he also um, is still reluctant to say that what I'm doing just now is, is anything to do with with the remission that I'm in. He's just saying that things could just be in place. I'm just enjoying a good, a good period of remission, which I find remarkable because it's the only period I've had like this um, since I've been diagnosed. But, yep, uh, he, he is not. Uh, on board with with either so no I, you know when it comes to nutrition it, it, it amazes me how how little interest they, they seem to have with it mate I'll, I'll be honest it's now that I can look at it and see the changes it's it's made to me um it, it's almost criminal at this stage I agree I agree it is and it's just it's one of those things where I think people put their kind of misplaced trust in the health system and doctors and not having a go at doctors personally Do- doctors do the job they're paid to but but the health system is a business and f- for some reason in our minds we have this idea that actually its sole purpose is just to make us as healthy as possible and it's not it's about making money yeah. and doctors are just trained to prescribe drugs they're not trained to do anything else so the doctor's just doing their job um prescribing drugs that's what and that's the message we try and get to people like th- don't be trusting your doctor they're just trained to prescribe drugs they don't understand nutrition they don't understand diet and as you said that they're they're unwilling to accept even when you're a you know living proof and yeah. example right in front of them so that's why we're trying to encourage people to you've got to take back control of your own health which obviously is what you did um yeah so talk us through obviously you said there that first was vegan your first step or did you do a few things and then go to vegan talk us through how you got started with diet nutrition yeah, so the the first step actually um, that I done, and it's probably I will show you the kind of the journey that I went on. Um, I was concerned because there was there was um, a lot of kind of lesions and stuff every time they did a colonoscopy. I I have and I still do. I have quite a lot of worry about like colon cancers uh, and things of that nature. And at that time, we're talking maybe about twenty fourteen fifteen, just after I'd left school, I cut red meat out completely. Um, because the side says red meat's got to get you colon cancer. And I'm like, well, I've got already got some issues down there. I'm not going to touch it. Um, so I actually went on a diet that was with chicken. Um, still had bread, pastas and stuff. It wasn't vegan. Still had um, various forms of animal produce, but no red meat at all. And that was the kind of the first step. I did that for about three years. Um, then round about the end of 2016, 2017, if if you remember when that's when the kind of the vegan propaganda was almost at its strongest, you know, you've got game changers and all of this that was going out. Um and I really get caught up on that and I'd seen some stories of people who some of were probably on terrible diets that had, had what they deemed a success, um, going plant based on their Crohn's disease and I thought this could be it. This this could be the the you know, it could be the answer. Um, and you hear all this stuff where they have the graphs and it's the pictures, they all the teeth, and you go, that's a compelling argument. We are, <laughs> you know, we're herbivores. And, and I fell for it all. Like, I mean, fell for it bad. Um, and that's, that's actually, and I'll, I'll touch on, like, my reluctancy with the carnivore stuff because I, I'd realised I'd been wrong with the veganism. Uh, I'd been stung before. So there was a couple of months where I was like, uh, you know, but I'll get to that. But with the veganism, um, I kind of went fully deep in at the start of 2017. Actually, the end of 2016, start of 2017, I was like, I'm doing this. Um, and for me, I'm very much black and white. It's like, if I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Uh, I'm not cheating. I'm not going to have milk in the weekends or anything like that. That's very much the way I am. Uh, so we really, we went into it deep. You know, we were getting... Um, and initially at the start, it, it was uh, just eating what was deemed vegan. So I was eating like soya burgers and what would be just junk food vegan but you're told because it's vegan it's healthier so <laughs> we're having linda mccartney sausages and corn mince and uh, and actually I, the veganism at the start it wasn't too hard because there's a lot of kind of processed foods um that makes that easier to eat if you eat a processed diet beforehand which i did really um and remember oreos are vegan so <laughs> yeah. it, these are the things <laughs> so i did that for two years and i was i was like uh Poor vegan uh, in regards to that. 
bad food, but I was strict. I didn't eat any animal produce through that period. Uh, but my stomach was getting considerably worse. Um, and it's it's no surprise I was eating predominantly now processed foods because you can't really go in places and get vegan food that would be as healthy as maybe getting some chicken breast in a shop. Um, and I was relying on mock meat products for these two years because I still had been brought up eating chicken breast and, and, qu- and, and real mince. But obviously you try to find comparisons to dinners that you were used to. Um, at that time, uh, there was there was a lot of kind of ma- fat malabsorption that I was struggling with. Um, I, I, it was really quite bad. Uh, I was getting a lot of pain uh, in my gallbladder area. They were concerned, um, and I was just I just wasn't doing well. My Crohn's was really bad. My skin was horrendous. I was losing a lot of blood, um, and then I came across the whole food plant based movement, and I thought, well, this makes sense. I've not been doing veganism right. Um, you need to eat whole food plant based, and we went deep for two years. We uh. We've got whole food plant-based cooking books from like the Happy Pear YouTube <laughs> channel. Um, I was getting one-to-one consultations with Cogwell Esselstyn's daughter, Jane, who is a whole food plant-based, basically her full life. Uh, she's got quite a large following on social media. And actually, if, if you look at some of the the, um, the emails that I've sent after we had our consultation, um, it was like, I can't eat chickpeas. I'm really struggling to get my protein in. I'm having severe fat malabsorption. So... To kind of summarise the the whole food plant based period, that was two years of me trying to not eat any sat like any forms of fat. Really, the whole food plant based um, diet is quite particular in what the so I was not having any seed oils through that period either. They're, they're anti seed oil. Uh, I was having sugar in whole food uh, fruit like dates and, and and stuff like that. I was only eating whole grains, so brown rice, buckwheat, all of this stuff problem with whole grains is with someone with Crohn's disease it's a million times worse than processed grains um so I was just becoming ill I was losing a lot of muscle mass I was and I was not that big at the time at all but I was becoming heavily sarcopenic I was wasting away uh my hairline was becoming ridiculously bad it was thinning um and I was having consistent uh ups in my medication and a bit had a bit of a wall um you know, after two years where they were talking about putting me on a pea protein uh, shake diet. So I was going to go go to a liquid only diet. Um, I wasn't absorbing anything. If I was eating some brown rice, the way that my body was working is you would see fully formed brown rice uh, in my stool with blood. Um, And that was the the common thing. Stuff was just going through me. I went from about 15 times going to the toilet a day to close to 30. And uh, out of work for a year of the two years, um, I just physically could not work. And every time I was trying to change it, I was only buying organic. As I said, we changed all our natural cleaning stuff. Uh, we had done everything that we could within this diet. And I went to see my my um, my gastroenterologist. I was down just about nine stone. They were, they were really concerned. Uh, my inflammation markers were very high. Um, to the point where when they went to also do the colonoscopy, I had so much damage in that area. Um, they'd questioned just getting into the to the anal area. There was just so much damage. My body was failing in every way, shape mm-hmm. or form. Um, and then they said, we're going to put you on an 8 to 16 week pea protein diet. We think the best option would be um, for me to have a, a bag. So yeah. we're talking a large portion of my bills being removed. Um, and whether or not um, that would have been, that would have helped me staying on a vegan diet. I'm very skeptical, um, but that gave me a fright, uh, a, a massive, massive fright. It was something that actually during the two years I had basically been close to requesting because my life was so poor. But being told that listen, we need to put you on a liquid diet, and we then need to do this, and I felt like I was dying. Like I need to be honest, I felt like I was dying. It, it terrified me, um, and and it made me question everything I believed in. In regards to the veganism, I was convinced, Ryan, that we were uh, herbivores. These people who were eating meat were causing all these issues. I was 100% a dogmatic vegan um, for those five years. And seeing that my health was was not only um, suffering, but getting worse in every healthy whole food alternative that I tried seemingly made it worse uh, was, was absolutely terrifying, I'll be honest. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. I can imagine because you're, you know, you're, you're doing everything you can and you think you're doing everything right and it's getting worse and you're thinking, you know, 
what what else is there you know yeah. it's a slippery slope isn't it what what was it because you know there's a lot there's actually a lot a lot of people who've gone from vegan to carnivore it's, it's quite funny there's quite a lot of people that have gone yeah. but that's quite a jump isn't it that's quite a journey so totally. what was it that got you started on that and and was it did it happen over a period of time that transition because it's like I say yeah. they're quite opposite ends of the spectrum totally um my, my introduction to the carnival diet was um i think like a lot of people uh through social media youtube it was uh it was actually jordan peterson's daughter um mm. they kept on coming up with the lion diet and then sean baker went on joe rogan's podcast um and at the time i remember watching the the joe rogan sean baker podcast going that man's absolutely mad <laughs> he is nuts um <laughs> You know, uh, that all that meat rotten in his colon. That's what I thought, you know. <laughs> it was um, unbelievable. But what intrigued me was, was hearing about how Jordan Peterson, he, he was having so much, um, well, it was it was remarkable the results he was having um, for, for his depression uh, and then more so for his daughter with an autoimmune condition, um, how she, who had the worst case of what juvenile arthritis, I think they say, and yeah. that doctor's ever seen, um, that she's able to not only kind of, come off medication but you look very healthy and thriving with an all meat diet and I was just I couldn't believe it I thought oh it's working for her that must be nice but there's no way she's going to survive long she's got to be unhealthy um but it, but it planted a seed and I'd already been through the process before I was told about the liquid diet that I was reducing certain foods because I was like I really can't stomach you know chickpeas at all um any nuts because I was trying to eat nuts for fat. It's really, I, it was terrible, you know? So I'd started to like remove so many plant foods anyway that I was like having such a restricted diet where I was basically living on um, certain types of these fruit roll-up things. It was whole food. It was just fruit juice. It's been dehydrated leather things that we made. Um, tahini um, as a fat source and some potato. I was, I was struggling. So I'd already, you know, chopped out so much. Um, honestly, I was... I was at rock bottom when I was told about the liquid pea protein diet and stuff. And, I, you know, me and my wife, we actually had a wee bit of a, a row. I was being a bit, um, it was the end of the world to me, you know. And she was like, we need to keep on trying. I wanted to give up with everything. I was like, I'm going to have a bag for life. Um, can I go swimming? Can I do the things I want to do? It's going to be here. I'm, it's, it's, emb it's been embarrassing from the age of 12, being known as this guy who needs to go to the toilet a lot. Sitting in doing exams in a room myself because I'd disturb everybody if I had to go to the toilet and stuff, you know? So that's it, like, you know, you become conscious of, of an opinion people have of you because of this. And then to have it magnified, to have a bag, you know, for life, it was, my head was was struggling, you know, mate? And um, so I was like, ah, I'm done, I can't, I can't do this. And she was like, why don't you just try this? I know it's against everything you know, we believe in, but right now we've got two options we either we try something different and this is it because veganism all these plant foods it's not working um or we could do this route and we can't change it once we do it um and it wasn't that night that i had an epiphany we had a wee bit of a, a back and forth and it was the next morning that uh before i sat down to struggle to eat the stuff that i was eating and i wasn't well um and i had a, a quite a bad morning that morning i was feeling unwell i was like i need to try this and the first thing I done, and I was I was worried sick because I've not I'd not eaten red meat for three years before I basically went vegan. So we're, we're talking it's it's close to uh, it's over eight years before I you know I ate red meat. And I was terrified. I was like, oh my goodness. And she's like, we'll try something easy. Um, we'll get a sirloin steak and we'll half it and I'll cut it into slices. And it was um, and I was terrified. You know, I'll be honest, mate. It was when you don't, you you really, really, really um, have such worry. It was like a child trying to eat broccoli for the first time in a Brussels sprouts. <laughs> and I just remember thinking, because again, when you're vegan, you see all this propaganda. When you walk past the meat aisle, it smells like death. It's like this, it's like that. <laughs> um, and I'm just thinking, this has got to taste terrible. And within the first kind of, the first two chews, because it was a texture difference, I thought, I don't like this. You know, I'll be honest. I thought, this is weird. But I kept on chewing and chewing. And also, almost after the fourth or fifth chew, I didn't want to show my wife just how much I was like, oh, this is good. You know, I was, uh, <laughs> I was trying to kind of um, no sell it a wee bit. Um, but, you know, we finished half a steak each. We still were eating our plant food. We're still, what you'd say is whole food at that time, um, a bit of steak. And after kind of four or five days, I tried to eat a wee bit of red meat, also eating some white and a wee bit of, chick uh, a wee bit of eggs. I was, I was finding that I was... Having the meat itself, I wasn't eating it with veg. My stomach wasn't sore after it. Um, I was worried about having them all together because, you know, you don't know what's, what's causing the issues and I don't want to blame anything. 
And I was noticing when I was eating the meat, especially the red meat, um, I wasn't having any any stomach cramps. I wasn't having to go to the toilet five, ten minutes after it, which was common. Um, and actually, I started to find that you know, I had quite a lot. I had an increase in energy. And when you've been kind of wasting away, not eating much, when you assume you have a couple of days of consistently eating more protein, and I wasn't eating any protein, mate, as a whole food mm. plant-based vegan, I wasn't having any mock meat. I couldn't stomach chickpeas or any legumes and nuts I couldn't have. So I had no protein, you know. Um, I, I, I generally started to feel like my brain was working a wee bit better, um, a wee bit more motivated. And it, it was remarkable, an, an energy difference. Um, but I was sceptical. I was sceptical of going and identifying going carnivore or anything like that because I was so deflated with my experiences with veganism. And anybody that knew me, I was five year vegan, two year whole food, whole food plant based. That's that's how they know you because vegans are this kind of. You feel like you need to tell people it's, that is what it is, um, <laughs> and I understand it because you feel like you're doing such a good thing, mate. You know, you're like I'm saving the planet and I'm making a difference. Um, and I think they're probably coming from a good place when they tell people. But you know, I fell into the same trap. I'll be honest. Um, so everybody knew me as that. And see, to kind of, I was, I was so worried to go. I think I was being wrong. Um, and maybe these guys in the carnival aren't they nuts? I'd, probably, I'd, I'd made a fun, I'd made funny a few carnival posts <laughs> on my own social media before. I'll be honest, you know. Um, so that was difficult. Um, but as the kind of days went on, and I was noting such a noticeable difference, um, I was like, I need to try this, but I was kind of got to keep it quiet at the start. I don't know what I announced anybody I was doing anything in case it failed dramatically initially. <laughs> um, but when I went carnival and I made the switch, um, the, the, the first thing that I noticed other than like the stomach cramps after eating, because I still had loose stools initially because I, I still had a surplus of these whole food plant-based recipes my wife had been making and stuff had been quite bad. I was in an active flare up. Um, but the first thing that I noticed was that my mouth, my mouth ulcers, it went away. And at one point, I would probably have about five or six mouth ulcers in various locations inside my mouth, um, and also have skin issues here. And that was almost another present, especially through the kind of last two years prior to going carnivore. Um, for whatever reason, it could be the plants I was eating, could have been just the Crohn's, I don't know. And I noticed that they started to go away and. Quite quickly, after three weeks, I would say I had none left. Definitely after a month, I had none left, but within that period in my mouth. And it's an amazing thing to be able to eat and not have pain in your mouth, and you really take that for granted, you know. And, and I started to feel good. And it was about after a month um, of eating higher red meat, um, very, very low uh, plant-based. I was, I was eating a wee bit of fruit still at the time, so I was still scared about the whole no-sugar thing. Um I was very sceptical. I was like, this makes no sense, you know. Um, so I wouldn't say I was more animal-based, but it was making a remarkable difference. But I was still having, um, you know, slightly loose stools after a month, but it was noticeably different. And at that point then, I was like, I've got to try this. I, I need to really try this. And from the second month, I was strict carnivore. Um, right through to I started experimenting, <laughs> which we can talk about because they failed. Um <laughs> But it was so, it, it was amazing. After the second month, I'd actually kind of, we still kept it quiet to people that we knew around us um, because a lot of people we knew around us and a lot of your, your friends and stuff, you can meet through veganism and stuff as well. Um, yeah. As daft as it sounds, you, you know, you it's, it's, it's just what it is. It really does become like a community thing. And the whole food plant-based did as well. We're looking for recipes. There was other people that we knew who had like gastro issues that were using that seemingly having more success than me it seemed um so that was awkward you don't know what to tell people oh, by the way i've not only went and stopped being vegan i'm now everything that you hate <laughs> you know it's it's one of the <laughs> the hardest things to kind of compare so but after the second month uh, at that point after eight weeks of me going i've just had three weeks now uh my stomach feeling normal to the point where i'm ready to go back to work and i use public transport for the first time in maybe four or five years myself and that wasn't an option i had to be in a car at all times and even just have the power for me to nip down to work myself if the wives get the car like you don't realize how liberating that was so i get back into work you know i was i was off in the sick was able to start from work and use public transport after two months on carnival and at that point then i was like right there's, there's something to this uh this this is quite remarkable I still had my concerns though. Um, one of the things that I was really concerned about was still the, the colon cancer stuff. Um, and it was in between the first kind of eight, 
you know, the eight weeks that I was using it, that I was trying to kind of look at all the answers that people have online. Like Ken Berry does a lot of stuff like talking about how it's epidemiology and what it actually means. Mm-hmm. Sean Baker, um, Carnivore MD. So I really kind of tried to get as much of that information to understand that this is epidemiology. Um, but that was hard. Trying to retrain your brain uh, an anxiety response like red meat causes cancer and the anxiety that I had around that and trying to relearn all of this kind of misinformation effectively that, that's out there was 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 difficult you know but after the after the initial eight weeks in breaking through that barrier um i knew that this is this, this is something different right this is it's a special being able to do this with with crohn's for me personally yeah absolutely you you, you bring up a great point that it, it is that we have to retrain our brain we have to forget you know uh, i came to it not through um a traumatic health experience like you but i i just wanted to improve my health and and i had to just accept okay everything i know is out and i've got to start over and i think one of the benefits of you know it's hard to look at benefits in certain things like this but one of the benefits of hitting that rock bottom is that yeah. you're open to try anything aren't you yeah. and i think most people if they're still struggling by they're not so willing to try things because they're like well you know i can just carry on with this and it's not so bad but when you've literally hit rock bottom you'll try it and one of the things i love about carnivore is that you get results so quick you know yeah. you, you like you said within two months you've had enough reinforcement that you're like you know what this is working yeah. then you start looking into the data and the science and finding out okay the stuff i thought before was wrong and you you building confidence yeah. on it don't you um, and so that that's one of the things i love is that if you give it a try you get the results so quick that it kind of backs up that you're doing the right thing especially if you compare it to when you went whole food and yeah. plant-based vegan obviously you know the results seem to be gradually worse over time with that. Definitely not a difference in the two months that you had with the carnivore. No. So, I mean, I know you touched on, I was also going to ask, did you get, you had people around you in your community who were yeah. vegan and were plant-based. Did you get pushback when you did sort of say to people about it? Did some people kind of fall out with you about it? Oh, definitely get pushback. Um, I think, I was surprisingly actually, uh, some of the worst pushback I got was for people that weren't even vegan. The, you know, <laughs> you know um, and still, still to this day, um, you have family members that, although they can see, you know, the difference, they are still massive yeah. skeptics. But I remember kind of the speaking to vegan friends initially, um, friends that are kind of close, closer to you, who understand your health issues and seeing you struggle and stuff. The, the, you notice somebody's character when they just want you to be well. Yeah. Um, so I had that anonymous uh, pushback for people online was was worse and actually i remember when i made my first post um because again i was so thrilled with that with the difference you know and i was like this is that's amazing um so i made my first post some of the, the comments were unbelievable you know uh and i get it these people are are passionate and stuff you know um but i think i think it's just it, it's hard for for vegans to, to see people who are doing the polar opposite to them um and thriving in ways that the vegan diet for so many people hasn't been able to offer it's it's hard and it's for me i felt anger when i was vegan seeing people who are eating you know animal based products always seemingly in better health and it, it was confusing for me like i would compare my health when i was vegan just generally when even when i wasn't in a flare up to friends peers who didn't have um any nutritional care in the world they would eat whatever they wanted and i was like why am i getting you know worse results all the time so, so you become a wee bit resentful um uh, uh, other people getting results when you're trying to be health conscious so i understand that but i think for the overall uh, you know i think most people because it was between getting surgery for the rest of my life and, and doing this I, I was fortunate with that and really my, my wife's family have been They've been in all way like the re- results with both ears because my wife went carnivore uh, on the second month that, that I did. She was a month behind, and they've been they've been supportive. And my family just my family just think it's it's crazy. They they love it. They they, they think you're healthy. Um, it's still my dad. He still struggles to get his mind around the idea that not eating vegetables is is healthy. But he struggles. But you know it, it's good. I, I like it. I like the conversation. You know I find when I'm in work. And I, I, pull out, I pull out my lunchbox and it's four burger patties with a little bit of cheese. People are like, is that all you're eating? You know, but I love yeah. the conversation. 
and people who have known me longer term and they see the difference that's the people that you get the most engaging conversation with um and my wife people in her work as well which is really good there's a few girls in her work now that are they're going low carb bit nervous about the carnivore but they're making the step just from chat so it's, it's good you almost evangelize the diet yeah. you know it's <laughs> terrible um but it's it's great and i and I, I love having the discussion. I love people kind of saying, um, just asking questions because if I had the opportunity prior to veganism and being exposed to the carnivore diet and had the chance to speak to someone, I maybe would have stopped a kind of five-year period in my life that, that made my condition go worse. Um, you know, so I do I do like to be vocal about it uh, to that degree, not to judge what other people eat. If they ask me, I'll speak about it. Uh, I try not to kind of be overbearing because it's it's a bit it's a bit of a put off in the in the staff room, must be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We don't want to be over the top. We don't want to be like vegans. But I mean, yeah. I know what you mean. It's you feel like you've got um you've discovered the secret to life that you need to yeah. share, you know. And the great thing about you, like you said, when you're talking to people you know, is that they know what your health was like before and now yeah. they see what it's like now. And you can't argue with that. You know, I could pull up a study and argue with someone about a study and they could argue this and I could argue that. They could have a study backs their view. I can have a study backs my view. But but no one can argue with the change in your health because that's yeah. there in front of them as a solid fact. So, you know, I, I, I love that part about it. That's why I love sharing the stories on the podcast as well because there's going to be people out there in the same situation that you were. And if I just went and talked to them, they'd say, that's not going to work. But we've got you. You know, Connor was in the same position as you were look at him now he's been through it it really works and they're more i think they're more likely to be open-minded then and like yeah. you said if people are open to talk it's great to have those discussions and to educate people because we've all been brainwashed you know from from birth it's been going on for the last 70 80 years and um, so it, it's well ingrained in society so um yeah no i, I think that's brilliant the, the 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 conversations are brilliant and if people are open to it you know brilliant yeah. to get it out there and especially when you're the, the live improve you and your your partner as well. So yeah. talk us through, you know, two months into Carnivore, everything's going amazing. You know, you, yeah. you, you're making great progress. Talk us through where you went from there and, and what continued to improve. Yeah, so, uh, you know, a big focus for me um, going Carnivore was, it was really just eating as much beef as I could because I found beef was um, was, was so, so well digested by myself. Uh, and I felt when I started eating it, after a couple of weeks of consistently eating, I was like, oh my goodness, why did I believe that this was bad for me, you know? Um, you felt robbed, Julie, this is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so a big focus in beef, so I'd actually started after the kind of first two, two and a half, three months, I felt well enough to start uh, doing more training. I'd always did stuff in the house, but because my stomach was quite bad, I was restricted to some calisthenics in the house and some DDPY yoga. But I had the ability to go swimming again. Um, and I started doing exercise. Me and my wife would go out running. I'd start lifting weights and being in the gym. Uh, and we, I was, I had the energy. And that, that was the most amazing thing. I had the surplus of energy, not just to go about my life and do the bare minimum. I didn't want to sit down. I just felt like I had this elixir of, you know, youth. And I just wanted to do as much as we could. Um, so we really put a big focus on eating as clean as we could. Um, again, as I said, very black and white. When I went carnivore, I was carnivore. Um, and after the second month, I wasn't eating fruit. I was like, this is great. I was having some electrolyte supplementation um, just so I could get kind of used to it at the start. And and, and I was thriving. We got through the summer um, and it was the first summer in my life that I can remember going the full duration of the summer without a flare up after the diagnosis. You know, it was, and we were just thinking at the start, thinking this is great, but you're waiting for the flare up. You know, I, I didn't think I'd be over a year without anything, you know. Um, but we'll, we're also living in the moment and enjoying it. And I was enjoying going to the gym. Like when the flare up comes, I know it's going to last a wee bit and then I can maybe feel like this again. That's what I kept on saying because this is great. If this is what my normal is in between, I am happy. Um, but weirdly enough, I'm still waiting for the flare up. You know, it's, it's just not happened. Um, but we, you know, it, it's it's been amazing uh, being able to kind of do the exercise and stuff again, going to start judo, um, being able to go walks with the dogs. And this is something that's a bit embarrassing, but see, prior to, to um, Carnival being vegan, when we would go hikes with the dogs, and we still would, it was, it was one of the places that I felt okay to be out because usually we're in a remote place, you can do the toilet, <laughs> you know, outside. <laughs> but I would always have a bag with a change of clothes, 
underwear, socks, everything wipes. Uh, I would never leave. It was always with me because I was worried so badly because how bad my stomach was to uh, for that. And the ability now for me to never have to take anything like that with me. I have no concerns when I go out. Um, my wife would, would be able to kind of tell you, before we would go out, I would be in the toilet for maybe 45 to an hour prior and we would have everything in the car. Um, we had wipes, we had um, change of clothes for the car that was always there. We would have a backpack for me to take for us to go there. And when we were planning road trips, my wife would have to plan where the service station were. So we knew mm. at every stretch if we could stop for the toilet. And for me, during the carnivore for that summer and going into the autumn, for us to not no longer take a bag with us, to be able to go long hikes for 10, 15 miles and you never have to go to the toilet. You never need to worry. You never need to have an embarrassing change. Um, it, it was fantastic. And what I noticed as well, uh, Ryan, because I was so worried, my health was so bad, I had so much health anxiety. I Because I was I was unwell um, for so long, I was thinking I was deteriorating, I was dying. When I went to this way of eating, the amount of anxiety that I have has went from, I would say, very high to zero, unless something is actively making me anxious like you know one of the dogs is is hurt their paw out in a walk <laughs> you know i don't feel um anxiety and I, I had chronic anxiety i was on medication yeah. for anxiety during being on uh, a vegan diet i'm not saying it was a vegan diet itself i'm just saying that the carnivore diet has reduced my anxiety um whereas beforehand it was really hard uh, for me to kind of go about day to day without worrying having catastrophic thinking about my health or the people around myself so, so that was a big thing um and just getting confident again um being able to be outside not having to worry that i might go to be next to a toilet being able to travel again myself you know you know what as a, as a 28 year old it's, it's crazy to think me going down and traveling myself that my wife being there if she's got the car it's a big deal but see when you've not been able to do that you know uh, for that long and I wasn't able to when I was unwell go and do driving lessons so I was actually robbed of quite a bit of time um, because my stomach was so bad the prospect of being with a stranger for an hour in a car was the worst possible thing um, so this is since Carnivore I'm now very very close I'm not the best driver but I've been, to, I've been <laughs> doing driving lessons and, and it going so well and having the confidence to do that and do all these things that I've not been able to do had promotions and work no longer having to work from home which is something I had to do even though I was that poorly I had to go in the right. sick from a working from home job being on the Carnivore diet has allowed me to now start working in the public doing something I love and um, so it's, it's been amazing, but I think the most important thing for me during that was to be strict. I was I was very strict, you know. Um, the first year was was uh, beef, so water, some egg, um, and very occasionally some chicken and pork, and that and that was it. That that was how we thrived um, and felt good. Added some milk a um, couple of times. Didn't really kind of do do much for me. I think it just made me want to drink more milk. <laughs> you know it was uh, i just couldn't stop so i decided not to bother but genuinely through eating a carnivore diet i i can say a hand in my heart i've not had any um periods where my stomach's been bad being on a strict carnivore diet which is something that I, I could never imagine i'd be saying more than a year down the line it's it's just it's remarkable to me to be honest yeah that that's amazing and that just it just blows that argument out the water of where you know people say it's extreme you know, it's an extreme diet, yeah. you know, what's extreme? You've just listed off all of those things about your life that you never thought you'd be able to do again. You never, yeah. you know, you couldn't even imagine doing them. And now you're doing them. You've got your yeah. life back. And and what? You can't eat some plants. Like <laughs> that. that's not extreme. That's getting your life back. And it's just a ridiculous argument that I find that people give and um, th that it's extreme. I mean, you know, have you, I imagine you've had criticism like that fr oh, from yeah. people. How, how do you kind of answer them back with that? So yeah, I've had, I've had uh, some some pushback. Definitely, I've had people that tell me that you know the, the secret is to eating a balanced diet. You know, <laughs> I had the blue zones chat and vegans live longer. And and what I say to them uh, consistently consistently was, if I was to continue eating the way that I was, I would be sitting here with a bag just now with potential yeah. two foot and my bill removed. Um, still on medication, still unwell, um, and and here now eating a diet that's supposedly going to cause me all these ailments. Uh, I'm thrive. I've never been as healthy. Um, 
so it, it just it makes me it makes me so skeptical um, of a lot of, I kind of what we're taught when it comes to nutrition from my own experience. But I can I can also see it through people who have seen me and they've took a bit of a notice to it and they're like, this doesn't make any sense, you know. <laughs> I get friends that go, if you told me before you done this, um, what you're going to do, I'd have said you're nuts. You're going to make yourself worse. You're going to give yourself all manner of issues. Don't do it. And now that they themselves are, are they're stunned uh, and they're becoming more sceptical. Or at the very least, what I've noticed is the people around me are eating a lot more meat. May not be completely carnivore, but the fear against meat is is something that's that's not as prevalent. And even even my own brother, he he struggles with uh, the idea of cutting out so much of his diet. He's not got the best diet, but he himself knows. He's like, mate, this. If I want to be healthy, I need to do this because it, he couldn't believe it. He was through. He was with me through it, seeing how bad it was. Um, to the point where he was like, you know, I thought you were going to die. I thought was, just something else was going on. Uh, and to see me eating some some burger patties and you know chicken thighs in the weekends it's a treat he's like that's worth giving up anything you know um so i found that most people have been except except i think it'd be harder for someone who hasn't had any issues um Mm -hmm. other than maybe like you know it's it's hard to say if someone just wants to do it for their health people are going to be skeptical because they'll say oh look this is vegan a b and c who's also healthy um (laughs) But I think you really get an idea of what's really healthy when you have two people with uh, similar conditions and they've tried both sides of the spectrum and it's it's clear that only one is working and it's the one that the dietitians and the medical um, mainstream kind of narrative tells you will not work. The carnivore diet will make Crohn's worse. It will it will it will kill you before you know you finish the month. That's it's almost that extreme. Um, and people are terrified to try the carnivore diet with Crohn's disease, IBS, IBD. I think people with IBS have even less to lose. They 100% need yeah. to try it. Um, yeah. But people with IBD, um, especially, the medication doesn't work long term. That's why we need to keep on cycling. The medication makes us feel terrible. And it reduces it reduces our lifespan because the medication is very hard on the body. If you could, even if the carnivore diet makes me have a heart attack in my 60s, and this is what I'll say to the day I die, that is a better reality for me than to live how I was living on a cocktail of medications that would change all the time with different side effects, colonoscopies all the time because things weren't getting worse and not being able to leave the house uh, without a chauffeur there and a change of clothes. And I implore anybody with IBD um, to, to give it a try because... I've had so much contact with people who have Crohn's and IBD uh, and even IBS, and I am I'm yet to find someone who has upped their protein, upped their fat through meat, animal sources, and reduced their plant foods, who have had their condition get worse. I've not seen it. All I all I've seen is people who have felt better, um, who have continued it long term, who are able to reduce their medication and and get their life back, and it's it's. It's unbelievable that I see this every day. I'm contacted with people almost every day at this rate. Um, tell me their message. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. But at the same time, it's also very frustrating because this is there's people who have got lifelong conditions like Crohn's disease who could have a really good standard of life if the medical if the medical kind of narrative would change and would tell people you can do this. Yeah. Exactly. It's, I mean, one of the clearest points of that really shows how much better it can be is that according to the medical world, Crohn's is just a lifetime condition that will only get worse over time, you know, like, like type two diabetes and lots of other conditions. According to them, it's not reversible yet. We know it is. There's all tons of people out there like yourself and like others who've reversed it with diet, but then the people we're relying on for our health are telling us it can't be reversed. So you should really be questioning why you're going to trust them when that that's their view of it and medications are especially when it comes to guts guts and our gut health medications are one of the worst things because um, they're just increasing our toxic overload and making things worse so you know if we there's another option to it it's 100 percent worth trying and and talking on medications i I think did you did you say you're now completely medication free as well yeah so i've not been on any medications at all uh, for a year now so during my time starting carnivore um when I was going to go into the pea protein diet, they were, I was just getting infusions. They were going to 
um, get me the bag because things were so bad. I'd already been on immunosuppressants and steroids. Um, so I had uh, two infusions after I was in carnivore um, because I was just within that period. After that, uh, I stopped. So as of last month, I've been a year now medication free, which is wow. the first time since I've been 12 years old. So we're talking 16 years, mate, that that's <laughs> happened. And it's... Um, one thing that I've noticed from being medication free, especially, I, I don't know if anybody else feels, I sleep better. I don't know whether the medications affected my sleep. Weird. Uh, I used to get a lot of nausea, especially in the morning, almost like an acid reflux type. So I was on a meprazole as well to combat that because the medications were messing up my gut. Uh, and Crohn's as well can mess up your gut, obviously. Um, I don't have acid reflux at all. Like it doesn't exist. I couldn't even remember what it feels like, <laughs> to be honest. Um, <laughs> and I just find that just generally, um, when you're on a lot of medication, it's not that you've got severe brain fog. You just feel like you're just not 100% there. Like you've woke up, you've went for a sleep in the afternoon, you've woke up and you're like, oh, come on. I shouldn't have went for that sleep, but you've came to a wee bit. That's what I felt like all the time. Um, struggle to retain information like I would have prior because you are med- you don't feel well, you're on medication, you're run down. And the biggest difference for me now is the fact that I've got a clear headspace. I'm motivated and just, you know, it's it's been remarkable. I, the physical things have been great, you know, but when you have issues with your stomach from the age of 12, you can kind of get used to going to the toilet so much. It's debilitating. It's terrible. But what's also worse is when you're in your own house, you've got a bad stomach, but your brain's also kind of not working too well. You're down in the dumps. For me, the mental clarity that's gave me and how I feel in the head has been a bigger gift than how I felt down there because it's allowed me to appreciate the difference in my health and um, and it's allowed me to kind of really think about it, you know, in depth because it could be easy to come and, you know, the vegan diet's this and the vegan diet's that, you know, and be quite annoyed at the fact that I'd looked into so much propaganda and it became worse. But what it's actually made me do is I respect the people who are vegan who try for their Crohn's um, because they're making an intentional, an intentional decision about their health and about what they eat. Um, and I, I can completely understand why they're, they're so reluctant to admit they were wrong and, and try something that's the polar opposite because it's a terrifying thing. And we've all got an ego as much as we try not to have it. We all have a bit of an ego, you know, uh, is what it is. Um, and I know exactly what it feels like. Not only are you worried to admit to yourself you were wrong, the feedback of the people around you and stuff. And I think there's a lot of vegans out there who are a lot closer with IBD to making this switch than than many people realise. And I think one of the only things that's keeping them there is the potential backlash of the community. And I think that's why it's so important as well to promote the carnivore community like so many like yourself do. as an open space where we can have some honest discussions and it's not judgmental, we're not dogmatic although everybody gets a bit dogmatic at times um you know that i think that's important that trying to keep this you know community the, the polar opposite to what it is because that that atmosphere in that community is keeping people from leaving and trying this because they're worried about the feedback and potentially keeping people from healing um so that, so it's a shame but you know going back to kind of having no medications it's still to me it's it's, it's unbelievable you know it's i still have my um I've got the pill boxes with all the days of the week and stuff. It's you know the stuff that my granddad, who's ninety four, has. Uh, yeah. I had the same, and it's just it, it's amazing. You know, it's it's amazing. See going on holiday and not having to take medication. Yeah. See going away <laughs> for a night and not having to do that. See you no know, going to the chemist. Mm. Like a, a lot of people, like if they're not for the UK, they don't realise how difficult going to the chemist can be. You're in there for about twenty minutes. So the the pharmacist is on his lunch when you go. Yeah. It's that's what it's like. So not not having to do that, going to the pharmacy not having to kind of take medication just in general it's, it's it's such a reward but the the best thing is the the mental clarity the generally just positive kind of feeling that i feel with the majority of the time and just a freedom from from the worries that i had it's it's, it's been such a gift yeah uh, that's um, that's amazing it, it's brilliant and like you said it's even just the the awkwardness of having to take your medication everywhere and get it you yeah. know that that's a brilliant benefit 
And as you say, the, the health benefits, obviously, first, you have to improve your health to get off medication, but getting off medication will improve it further. Like I said, there's, totally. you know, I haven't got time to go deep into it in, on here, but gut health is something I'm really big on, especially with clients and medication is one of the, the biggest killers of our, of our gut health. So getting off yeah. that is amazing for you. And so I know, obviously, you know, you've, you've looked into stuff and you began to learn, relearn stuff and look into science. And obviously, there's one thing that with your condition, I definitely need to talk to you about. And I'm sure lots of people have brought it up to you is, you know, how are you going to survive without fiber? <laughs> what, what, what do you say to people when they bring that up? Well, um, fiber is a, that's one they get annoyed at, actually. Mm. I think they defend that to, to the death. Um, well, what my experience with fiber is well, during my, my time with as a vegan, I actually get, I went through periods, I had a lot of loose stool, and then in between, I'd get really bad constipation. And I mean, terrible constipation. Uh, I, was, I was prescribed fiber by the doctors. I took psyllium husk. Um, yeah. fiber as well I, I was double dosing the fiber at one point <laughs> it was that bad and I almost had an impacted cold it was terrible uh, my constipation wow. was terrible um, that was one of the things I was most skeptical about um, when going carnivore as well personally I'll, I'll be honest I thought how am I going to do the toilet without fiber um, to the point where I supplemented the extra fiber when when you know I, I struggled because I believe so much that fiber was important um, <laughs> what I will say uh, one thing's for sure, fibre is not needed at all. Um, <laughs> I, I found that fibre has not only um, been one of the biggest things that made my stomach bad, um, it's clear as day that when I tried to add it in, when I did a wee bit of experimentation afterwards, that I just cannot process any fibre whatsoever. It's, it's an impossibility, it makes me ill. When I have discussions with people in regards to fibre, most people don't actually understand why fibre is healthy. They just They just... Yeah. They just say a phrase. I was like, why is fibre needed? Uh, oh, you need to go to the toilet so much. Why? You know? Um, people don't know. They're ju it's just, um, they're just saying phrase words that they've heard. Yeah. I remember when I was whole food plant-based, one of the one of the main YouTube channels that I used to watch was a guy called was Dr. Clap uh, Claper or Clapper, K-L-A-P-E-R. Um, guy's very intelligent in what he does. He's a doctor generally, but he, he made a big emphasis on fibre. Um, and he says... Vegans who are healthy, whole food plant-based vegans who go to the toilet eight, nine times a day, that means your body's working correctly. It's, you know, that was the big thing you would say. Eight, nine times a day, it's healthy, you know? And it's it, this is something they speak about in a discourse. Um, they bring up how, you know, chimpanzees, gorillas, they go to the toilet so many times a day. And this is the stuff that they bring up. Um, and I believe in it hook, line, and sinker. Um, what, what I'll tell anybody who believes that fibre is necessary try without it especially if you're constipated i know it's got to go against everything you believe try without it for a week make sure you're drinking more water eating a bit more fat and i can 100 percent guarantee you that you're going to see not only a massive benefit to your gut health you're going to start having normal stools and you're going to have normal gut motility if you consistently do that um but obviously you're interested in, in gut health as well i take it when you mentioned fiber you've you've had similar kind of negative feedback yeah <laughs> yeah 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 it's um yeah it, it's one of those funny ones like you said everyone believes you need fiber but like you said if you ask them no one really knows why you need fiber yep. you know it's our digestive system is a one-way system you know we don't need fiber to push stuff out you know what goes yep. in is is coming out you know and and sometimes they even describe it as you know, you need some roughage. Why do you want roughage? And do you know how sensitive our bowels yeah. are inside? Like, why would we want roughage in there? Something we can't even break down. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I just find that's a funny one. I thought, especially, you know, with bowel issues, you know, I, I, I thought that you would have definitely had some people bringing that up and some pushback on it. And, you know, it's crazy how obsessed everyone is with fiber. And I even hear some people who are kind of, they're not vegan, but, and they're kind of, they've gone against the societal norms in terms of understanding health, but yet they yeah. still think fiber is this big, important thing. So they're eating animal products and some plants, whole foods, and they still think fiber is this big thing. I'm like, yeah. like you said, fiber is not necessary. Look, if, if someone feels that their body processes fiber, okay, and it doesn't harm them in their diet, fine, you can have it, but it's not yeah. necessary. And for lots of people, especially anyone with damaged guts and bowels, it's, it's going to cause you problems. It's going to yeah. cause you issues. If someone's completely healthy, your gut's completely healthy, you might be able to process a little bit of fiber without side effects. But for, for a lot of people, it just won't. It will cause you issues yeah. um, like you did. And so, yeah, that, that's one I like to just, just, just bring up with you as you've been there and had the experience because yeah. it's still something people struggle with.
Oh, well, fibre is a, it's a funny one. It's um, people get, are, are passionate fibre advocates, it seems. <laughs> um, but even diverticulitis, it's effectively um, at that point, it's, it's the the bills, it's, it's, it's given up, you know, uh, and people think with diverticulitis, give these people fibre. It's the worst thing you can do. These people are... <laughs> They, they can't process anything extra, never mind roughage. Um, and, and just the way they describe fibre as well, it doesn't, when you take a second and you step back and you think about it, you go, this, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, yeah. And there would be a massive problem for the humans during the, the Ice Age if we needed some fibre, because that's some constipated people there. You know, they've struggled. Yeah. Um, but no, the fibre thing's re- remarkable. It's, it's one of the things people are, are um, more dogmatic about. And like you said, I see the similar um pages where they are health based talking about the, the importance of protein maybe some are even raw milk advocates but they'll also tell you you need just your servants of um fiber a day which yeah. they've got they've got part of the truth um i think it's a we're, we're all in a kind of a journey but yeah i, I like you said that a lot of people a lot of people are, are going to benefit from cutting out fiber and i think the narrative is 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 really starting to change uh, around fiber, especially from from the circles that we see, and it's a good thing that now that it's changed with with protein, more and more people are eating more meat based products um, online and posting about it, and and I really do think over the next couple of years you're going to see a reduction in the fiber. You're going to see a big move towards people eating an animal based or a, an ancestral diet, however you want to call it, where it's either carnivore or for some people if they're able to, with maybe some fruit, regardless of what they want to do, because. Yeah. It's, it's on fire at the minute, um, yeah. the, the amount of people f- who are having success. And, and what's remarkable is how many failure stories have you been exposed to? Yeah. It's I, I see it all the time as a vegan, and I would see posts and upon posts of people defending it and saying, this is why this didn't work in A, B, and C. But within the, the carnivore space, there's a couple of things that people might get wrong. Maybe not electrolyte uh, supplementation correctly, because it's maybe they've not done it before. Maybe not eating a bit too much fat, which you can adjust, or um, for whatever reason, people maybe eat a wee bit too much organ meat. You know, other than that, and it's it's human error. People people aren't failing. People aren't having chronic conditions getting worse. I'm yet to see someone with diabetes getting their diabetes <laughs> worse in a carnivore diet. Um, it's it's a protocol that's seemingly fitting so many different issues. It's helping people almost to a reset point in their health. What people want to do after that is up to them, but I think anybody who's got some health issues, if you want a reset point, six six to twelve months carnivore, strict carnivore is the best reset point I could ever give someone. Uh, I think it's it's been the best thing I've ever done. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think the reason that it that it won't stop growing is because, like you said, it works. Yeah. And, and, and it's not going to stop growing because if you try something, even if you think it's crazy and to be honest, most of the people like yourself, most people don't start carnivore thinking it's going to work. You know, people talk yeah. about oh placebo and this and that. Most people do not start it thinking it's going to work. They start it out of desperation thinking this will never work, but I'll try it and it works. And then yep. they tell the next person, the next person. So even though they're fighting against it and they're trying to shut it down, it's going to keep growing because it, it works. And like you said, yeah, there's some nuance to it. And as you said, m- most of the people I see um, getting any kind of issues with it, and again, it's not serious health issues, but no. oh, they don't feel as good. Most of them are overdoing the organ meat. Like you said, that's that's the main yeah. one, going way overboard on that. Um, you know, that there's always things like that. But the majority of people, as you said, amazing health improvements, which they're yeah. not getting with anything else. No, it's not, not even like it's not even like it's on par with medical. It's way past what medical system can do way past. Yeah. And so, like you said, you know, I encourage people to try it. And obviously, you know, Connor has been there himself and tried it and can yeah. tell you, you know, to, to try it. So, you know, absolutely. I think what give, I mean, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, we, we've had quite a bit, but just, you know, what, what's the message you, you'd like to leave people with? Um, from from your personal story and what you'd like people to take away into this? Yeah, I think there's there's a lot of power in trying to take control of your of your own health. I think that we sometimes are expected to feel that we're powerless. We need to rely on mm-hmm. the medical professionals and what you see online um, for your own health. What I would want to kind of say to anybody who's got IBD, IBS, any gastro related issues, uh, you yourself deserve the chance to feel this good. You yourself 
shouldn't be on medication if it can be avoided for the rest of your life and you are worth trying this um i understand how skeptical uh, it, you may be i was the exact same i thought everybody in the carnivore space was a lunatic i'll be honest um but this could be the single greatest kind of decision you ever make from a health standpoint and the worst thing that will happen from the end of this is you give something a try um because you're already in a path where you're taking medication and in pain and it may not work what i can say from my own personal experience and the hundreds of people that i've spoken to and been in contact with over the last year um the likelihood of this working is extremely high if you do this correctly and i believe that once you try this you're not only going to have a better standard of life, you're going to be able to share this with people around you who are suffering the same and give them the opportunity to have a better standard of life. Because again, we're all worth feeling good, mate. End of the day, we've got one chance on this earth. Let's try to be as healthy as we can be um, and let's try to take control of our own health. That's what I would say. Yeah, brilliant. I think that's a powerful message and, and I think it's powerful coming from someone like yourself who's been there and you've been through it and done it Thank and you, you were sceptical and you were desperate yeah. and you tried it and... You know, it worked. And I say, yeah. I can back up, same as you said, being in this space, everyone I've spoke to, all of the clients I've worked with, people I've um, in, in my life that I've helped, not had anyone not get good results um, yeah. and not respond well, not seen a single one. So I, I can absolutely back that up. Um, yeah, I think I think the overarching me message from today is give it a try and, and that don't ever think that it's too far gone. And as you said, we, we deserve to be healthy and, and you deserve yeah. to be happy healthy and taking control of your health makes you feel good it's really empowering and yeah. um, and i encourage everyone to everyone to do it definitely so um yeah. connor thank you so much and um, for giving us your time today um i really appreciate it and um, thank you for coming on Ho hopefully you've enjoyed yourself yeah no it's been fantastic mate um you're an absolute gentleman uh, i love what you do mate so please keep up and i'll, I'll, I'll watch the others i really do enjoy it yeah. Yeah, thank you. That's awesome to 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 uh, have the support. That's brilliant. Thank you. And um, before you go, though, tell us where we can find you online for people who yeah. want to follow your story and see what you do. Um, give give a shout out. No way. So uh, predominantly, uh, I use X, formerly Twitter. Uh, you can get me at Crohn's Carnivore. You should see me there. I'll be there with a red face and a red belt with uh, <laughs> my wife in the picture. Um, I post on Twitter as well. It's Carnivore uh, on Instagram. Sorry. Uh, it's Carnivore for Crohn's, although I'm not as active on there. And I also kind of have some discussions, like Ryan, uh, with people on my ex. So if you like a chat about kind of nutrition, exercise, and just general uh, chats about wellness, you might like that there as well. Awesome. I'll share all the links in the podcast description anyway, so everyone can awesome. easily um, find you, give you a follow, and um, check it out. And um, thank you so much for being here again today. Thank you, everyone else, for listening. We'll see you again next week, and let's get optimal together.